This screencast pertains to materials from Module 2, Lesson 23, and is based upon uh, items from the problem set. I don't have any homework word problems included in this because they're very basic, very straightforward, one-step problems. However, I hope that you do take the time to view some of the word problems from the practice set because they use tape diagrams rather extensively. They're a little bit more complex, and by looking at how tape diagrams are used and how they're applied, it's going to help you in the very near future as we come to the end of the second module. Let's start with the first problem here, and this is from the practice set. Remember, our three basic steps are to estimate, then solve, then check. So let's uh, do a little estimating here. I'm going to first round my divisor, and I'm going to round that to 20, because 23 is pretty close to 20. I might choose another number. I might choose 24 also, because I see that we have an opportunity there, just mentioning that. So what do we have that's really close to uh, the 48? We have 48, and that would be 48 hundreds. So I would choose 40 hundreds, try to fit that in there, 40 hundreds. So let's start our problem and see how we do with that. So as you know, sometimes we have to adjust our estimates based upon uh, the actual numbers that we work with. So I have 23, and I would multiply that 23 times 2, because that about 2, and we get 46. Not a problem, it's not larger than 48, so I have my 48 hundreds, and I subtract 46 hundreds, and I get 2 hundreds. Note that I'm going to record my 2 in the hundreds place in my quotient. Now we need to continue. I cannot work with 200s and 23, so I'm going to decompose that, and I'm going to call it 25 tens. So I have 25 tens. Well, what's we have again? 20 for our divisor, and 25 tens is really close to 20 tens. So if I do that, I'm going to get my two, or excuse me, one and that would be 110. So uh, I'm going to multiply 1 times 23. I get 23 tens. I subtract, I have 2 tens. I must decompose one more time because I can't work with 2 and 23. So we're going to decompose my 2 tens, exchange them for 20 ones, and bring down my 9 ones. We now have 29 ones. We can work with that. I think that it's pretty straightforward. It's obvious that we're going to put 1 in my quotient in the ones place. 1 times 23 is 23. I subtract and I get a 6. So my quotient is 211 with a remainder of 6. Let's uh, test that by uh, checking our answer using the inverse operation. We're going to multiply the quotient times the divisor, then add the remainder. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. I put a 0 in my 1's place because I'm now multiplying by 2 in the 10's place. I have 2, and I have 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Take our partial products, find the sum for our final product. Now I'm going to find my divisor, which is, or excuse me, my remainder, which is 6. We're going to find the sum. And we can see that we have a match between our dividend and our check number right here. Let's do another example. We have 4,368 divided by 52. <coughs> All right, well, let's do our rounding. We start with our divisor, and we get 
50. And we're going to look at our thousands. Can't work with that because 50 is greater than 4. So we're going to go and decompose from our thousands to our hundreds. 43 hundreds. I can't work with that because 50 is greater than 43. So now I'm going to decompose to my tens place. So I have 436 tens. I'm going to have to find a number that works with that. So I am going to think of my multiples of 5. And I'm going to try... Uh, how about 400 tens? We're going to divide that by 50. And we can decompose that if we like. So I could have 400 divided by 10 divided by 5. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to do these steps out. I get four, 400 divided by 10 is 40 divided by 5 equals 8. And that would be 8 tenths. So let's record that with our tableau. I have 4,368 divided by 52. We're working with 8 in the tens place, so I'm going to put my 8 in the tens place. We're going to try that out by multiplying 52 times 8, regroup, and I get 416. I'll subtract that, and I get a 20. Now the 20 is less than 52, that's good. We can't work with 20 tens, so we're going to change the 20 tens into 200 ones, and we're going to bring down our ones. So we've now decomposed this to the ones place. I have 208 ones. I'm going to do a little thinking. I'll have I'll change that to 200 ones divided by 50 equals four ones. Okay, let's give it a shot. Do some multiplying. 52 times four equals 208. We will record the 4 in the quotient, in the 1's place. We'll subtract, we get a remainder of 0. I don't have to put our 0. In fact, I usually don't, but some kids do. It's not wrong, but it's not standard uh, operation. So now we're going to check our work by multiplying our quotient times our divisor, and we multiply 2 times 4, get 8, and 2 times 8 is 16. Put a 0 in my 1's place because I'm multiplying from the 10's. 5 times 4 is 20, regroup my 2. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 2 is 42. We'll find the sum of the partial products, and we see once again we have a match. Okay, this is a pretty simple procedure. Uh, the main thing, the main point of this is talk about our decomposition and the places. If we uh, think about that, we won't have any questions about where we place our digits in our divisor. That's a very common mistake with students, not putting it in the right place. So think about how you're decomposing the number, and that tells you what place to put each digit in your quotient. All right. Again, I want you to follow along, if you have the time, uh, to just look at another example of a tape diagram. And I'd like you to start relating the tape diagram with a specific operation. It'll be very helpful in the future. Okay, so we'll start with our problem. We have 1,092 flowers are arranged into 26 phases, with the same number of flowers in each phase. How many flowers would be needed to fill 130 phases? Well, we're going to start with our first thing here. We're going to start by modeling this first statement. And then when we uh, figure that out, uh, we're going to continue with our second part of the problem. All right, when we look at this, we know our whole, 
and we know we have to take it and break it down or divide it into 26 phases with the same number of flowers. Okay, that same number of flowers tells us its division. We're going to start making a tape diagram. We know our hole is 1,092. We're going to take that and we're going to divide it into 26 equal pieces. I'm going to model another way to do this. Two, one, two, and 26 and put my ellipsis in there to represent the missing ones. We need to go and figure out what is one vase. Let's uh, look th at this another way. So I have 26 units equals 1,092. So I need to find what one unit is. And I'm going to do that by taking 1,092 and dividing it by 26. At that point, I'm going to have find the answer, and one unit equals, we'll find that out. That equals the question mark. Once we have one unit, we can figure out what 130 units is. And I'm going to just write that in right now. We'll come back to that momentarily. So we're going to have to go from 26 units to 1 unit to 130 units. We have a division problem here, so let's get started. I have 26 in the divisor and 1,092 in the dividend. We can use our estimation techniques. Now I'm looking at 26, and I'm going to kind of look at that as 25. Remember that flexible thinking. I'm going to start by looking at our thousands. Now we're going to have to decompose that. One one thousand, one thousand decomposes to ten hundreds. Can't work with that either. So now we're going to go down to one hundred nine. One hundred nine in the tens place. One hundred nine tens. So one hundred nine is really close to one hundred. And I'll put the unit down below. And when I divide that, I get 4 in what place? Tens. Okay, so when I start this, I'm going to start with my 4 in the tens place. So let's, uh, let's multiply first. I have 26 times 4 equals 104. I'm going to record my 4 in the tens place. I subtract and I get a 52. Again, if I'm going to look at my estimation here, I am going to use that 25 again. And so I would have 50. And since I have 52, I decompose that to ones. So I have 50 ones divided by 25 equals 2 ones. So let's do the work. I can mentally tell that 26 times 2 is 52. Record 2 in the ones place in my quotient, and I get 0 in the remainder. So now I have 1 unit equals 42. Now I need not 1 unit, but 130 of the same size units. I can use a tape diagram once again. We'll draw it down here. I don't know the hole. I need to find that out. I need to find what 130 units is. I do know what one unit is, though. And I can model that a number of ways. I could say I could say one unit is 42. And I can use the same approach I did. 1, 2, ellipsis, and to 130. Now this tells me that I have 42 130 times. I have the part 42. I need to find the whole. In this case, it's kind of the opposite of the previous uh, portion of this problem. Where I knew the whole, I had to find the part. Here I have the part. I need to find the whole. This represents 130 times 42. So we'll multiply 130 times 42. Let's uh, find the partial products. 
2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 1 is 2. Put in my 0 because I'm multiplying from the tens place. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 3 is 12. Regroup the 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. We'll now find the sum of the partial products. And we get 5,460. And right here I should have written 42 times 130, 130. And we'll solve and get 5,460. Now I need to make my statement. I got just enough room to do that. Uh, my workspace is a little crowded. I would say 5,460 flowers would be needed to fill 130 vases. Okay, let's go on to another one. I hope that uh, this shows the relationship between inverse operations. The diagrams are symbol, or similar, but in one case we know the whole, got to find the parts. In the other case we have the parts, we need to find the whole. Let's look at this problem. It said an elephant's water tank holds 2,560 gallons of water. After two weeks, the zookeeper measures and finds that the tank has 1,944 gallons left. If the elephant drinks the same amount of water each day, how many days will a full tank last? Hmm. Well, we've got a number of interesting steps here. Let's start by looking at the hole. We know that the full tank has... 2,560 gallons. So we're going to label the hole 2,560. And uh, we know that what he does is uh, measures that after two weeks. So after two weeks, we still have 1,944. So I'm going to just arbitrarily draw a line there and put 1,944. We have to figure out how many gallons these guys, these this elephant, drank in two weeks. Now, this is another kind of problem. It's a little bit different. We don't have equal parts. We know the whole. We know one part. We have to find the other. This represents a subtraction problem. We could look at this inversely. We've got to find out what number plus 1,944 equals 2,560. All right. So let's find out what's going on here. We're going to do some subtraction. We'll subtract. Oh, yeah, some mess up with the tool here. We're going to subtract 2,560 minus 1,944. And that's going to tell us how many gallons are consumed in two weeks. Okay, we need to do a little regrouping here. This becomes a 6, a 1, regroup again. We get a 15 minus 9 is 6. So this is 616. So we're going to draw another arrow, an arrow down here. And my hole now, represented there, is 616. All right, well, how long does it take to consume the 616. Okay, let's look at what we have here back in the problem. We have, uh, it takes two weeks to do that. So we're going to find out how much they consume each day. So I'm going to state this in units once again. We know that uh, 14 units, because we have 14 days, 
equals 616. We want to find one unit. Well, let's look at our diagram here. We can take this and we can divide it into equal parts because they have the same amount each day. And we can label this 1, 2, and 14. And we've got to find out what that's equal to. So again, we have the whole. We're dividing it into 14 equal parts. So one unit is 616 divided by 14. Let's do the math. 616 divided by 14. We can do some estimating here. I would like to, in this case, I'm going to work with 15. I know that 15 times 2 is 30. And 15 times 3 is 45. And 15 times 4 is 60. So I'm going to uh, take my 61 take my 15 rather and I'm going to have 61 tens I'm going to round that to 60 tens and that would give me 4 tens so I'm going to now multiply 14 times 4 and I get 56 We'll put uh, 56 underneath. We'll record the 4 in the tens place because it's 4 tens. Let's subtract. And I get a 5. Alright, I need to decompose my 5 tens to 1's. 5 tens is 50 1's plus 6 is 56 1's. Well, that's kind of handy because I did my rounding before and I had 56 when I used uh, 4 times 14, so we know that's a 4 once again. We subtract, and now we get 0. So what do we have? Well, we have 1 unit equals 44. Let's go back to the question. This one's complex. If the elephant drinks the same amount of water each day, how many days will a full tank last? Well, we know that one day is 44 gallons. So we know that the whole is 2,560. It's going to be a crowded page here, but uh, I think we can manage this. We'll do a tape diagram. We're going back to the same hole, but we're doing something different with it. We want to divide this into equal parts. And our parts are all equal to 44. So we don't know how many parts we have. So I'm going to label this 1, 2, and I don't know what that total is, so I'm putting a question mark there. But we do know that each part is 44. So I need to find out how many units I have here. So we kind of stop here with this. How many 44s? are in 2,560. Let's set up the problem. Might have to do a little shortcut sort of things here on demonstrating some of the estimating. But we'll do our best. Uh, 44, I would say, rounds to 40. And I have to look at my 256 tens. Hope I don't have to adjust. I might. So I am going to say two, 240 tens, and that would equal 6 tens. Well, I'm going to check that. I'm going to check it by multiplying before I actually record my quotient. So 44 times 6, I have a 4, regroup the 2, I have a 24 once again. And plus 2 is 26, 264. Okay, well, that's too big because my 264 is greater than my 256 tens. So I need to adjust. Since that's too big, I'm going to have to try 44. Remember, you're going to have to adjust these sometimes. So I am going to record my 5 in the tens place for my quotient. 
and I'm going to 44 times 5, a little short on space here, and I get 220. We'll subtract 220, and I get 36. 36 tens, I trade them for ones, I get 360 ones. All right, we can do our same kind of estimating here. Maybe I'm going to look at something a little differently. I'm going to look at this 44, and I'm going to say it's about 45. I've discussed this strategy in my class. I know that 245s is 90. Now we can work with a 9. And so if I'm working with a 9, how many 9s in 36? There's going to be 4 9s. So if there's 4 9s, there's twice as many 45s. So we're going to try 8. And I know I'm kind of shortcutting this, but I'm really getting close to out of space. So we're going to multiply 44 times 8, and I get 32, regroup, I get 32 again, I, 32 plus 3 is 35, I get 352, and I get a remainder of 8. So how many days is this? Yeah, I know we have a remainder, but our answer is going to be 40, uh, 58 days. And we can make our statement, I'm sorry, I'm out of room, but I would write, a full tank of water would last a little over 58 days, or I could just say 58 days with a little water left.